Hey, you guys, I'm making some magic over here. Hello, everyone. My name is Liz, and I'm obsessed with Disney. Today, I'm going to do a video that I'm sure many of you have been waiting for, as you can see from the title and the thumbnail. Today, I am talking about the reasons why I self-termed and why 75% of my apartment all self-termed within the same week. Okay, so I figured I would just kind of tell this as one long story, um, just so we can have this flowing in a cohesive way. Um, but I wanna kinda be as concise as possible because I feel like this is something that I can ramble on about and I really don't need to ramble. Throughout the whole program, as you guys kinda saw with a lot of my vlogs, um, I really wasn't happy um, this time around on this program. Um, and neither really um, was Lex. She was having a very difficult time. She had a really, really hard job. And it just, it really wasn't at all what she imagined. And especially somebody like Lex, who her dream is, you know, to work for Disney. Um, Kat was having a very difficult time because she would always, always be scheduled, like, at least 60 hour work weeks every single week. Um, she worked at Fountain View at Epcot, which is the Starbucks. Um, and at that point, they have never had CPs ever at any Starbucks location um, for throughout the whole parks. So they were testing it out um, in Fountain View because Fountain View is um, probably one of the more successful Starbucks locations in the Walt Disney World. Um, so they just really didn't know how to schedule CPs. Um, so they just scheduled them ridiculous hours all the time. Um, so the three of us weren't really feeling the fantasy as much as we should have. Um, Sarah obviously is having a grand old time. She's still there. Sarah actually uh, just got her extension through uh, January 5th. So I'm sure Sarah still watches my videos and looks at comments. So you guys should definitely all congratulate Sarah on her extension in the comments below. Uh, so anyway, um, as the weeks would go on, I was especially having a really rough time. Um, I'm going to start crying. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I'm letting you guys know now. Um, I could not go two days without crying. I would basically cry every single day. Um, I would call up my mom crying, my boyfriend crying. Um, being at Disney really, um, I developed a lot of severe anxiety issues. And a lot of that um, stemmed from putting so much pressure on myself. Um, I believe I've talked about this a couple times in my vlogs, um, where I had like such an incredible time on my last college program in the spring of 2015 um, and it was a perfect program like it literally couldn't be any more fairy tale than the program that I had um, so I knew I wanted to come back as soon as I finished graduation stay for the year extend as much as I could um, and really get my life going especially because I knew I had this dream of having this Disney shop and it <laughs> It's just true. It's like you cannot make it big as a Disney shop if you don't live near any of the parks. <laughs> One of the reasons why I feel like I'm kind of struggling right now with my shop. Um, so I knew that was something I wanted to do. I had to. I had it perfect in my head. Um, me and Bianca were basically going to live happily ever after together um, for this college program. Um, and it really wasn't that. Um, I was having a lot of like financial issues. Um, because I would have like three days off a week every single week um, I wouldn't really be scheduled overtime um, I'd have like pretty standard eight-hour shifts basically um, every day um, we my department was very um, strict on not having anyone have turnaround time they always made sure you had nine hours Magic Kingdom costuming doesn't abide by the eight-hour rule for turnaround time um, it's nine hours for us um, so I wasn't getting any kind of extra money whatsoever, 
um, before I got working on Move and Shake It, Dance and Play at Street Party because those are consistently 10 hour shifts. So if I worked an entire four day week of working on Move and Shake It, Dance and Play It, um, my paychecks weren't that bad. Um, but if I had a full week of just doing character room, it was very difficult. Um, again, we lived in an apartment which had some of the most expensive rent that the DCP has to offer. Um, so that's very difficult. Plus, um, I had a very high credit card bill I have to deal with um, because I uh, spent a lot of money on uh, my computer that um, I use because I knew I wanted to make my YouTube videos a priority. I needed to make sure I had a better computer. Um, so I had a high credit card bill that was weighing on me. And then I recently um, bought a car in September. So I had like um, car insurance payments along those lines I had to deal with. Um, so basically it's not much different than just being an adult living on the college program um, and not just, you know, having uh, mom and dad pay for all anything I wanted. So um, it was very hard financially. I was putting a lot of pressure on myself to have this be the perfect program and to get a professional internship because in my head I also felt like um, you know to be successful with um, making videos online for DCP um, you have to have a professional internship at the end of your college program um, so I was very stressed about making sure I had the perfect record card to either extend or get a PI um, which is kind of crazy because like never did I want to work for Disney for the rest of my life because I am a kind of person where I cannot bear the pressure of you know clocking in 30 seconds late and getting like a half a point or something like that um, so I was crazy I mean I guess part of it paid off because when I left I had a spotless record card um, so I just really was not having a great time on the program. So all the time, I feel like every night when Lex and I would lay down to bed, if we were going to bed at the same time because we had like completely opposite schedules, she'd always be like, Liz, let's just pack up all of our stuff, get in your car, and we will drive home um, to New York, New Jersey. Because, spoiler alert, Lex and I only live 45 minutes away from each other. Crazy town. Um, but I'd tell her, I'm like, you know, Lex, I know I'm miserable and she's like yeah you cry every single day um, I was like but you know I signed a contract I made a commitment I have to wait this out until at least August 3rd which is when our program ends um, so that went on for a very long time um, until mid-April so it was probably about it was probably like the week between like April 16th and April 22nd um, Lex got a call from her father um, saying that she needed to come home immediately um, because her mother was in the hospital and was in very serious condition. Um, so Lex was like, of course, like, you know, when that happens, you have to be with your family in situations like that. Um, so Lex got her flight booked for the following Thursday so that would be for um I guess it was that week so it would have been April 27th um so she has that flight booked and then she tells us that hey I am self-terming next week I'm leaving um so that was crazy we were like wait seriously because like we would always talk about like like we're miserable we want to leave um, but f realizing that she actually had to leave was very hard because this wasn't like, hey, I'm giving up on the college program. It was, hey, I need to leave for reasons that are out of my control. Um, so it was all really sad. We were like, oh man, we gotta hang out as much as possible. We only have like, you know, a week left with you and whatnot. Um, Maybe like two days later, um, I had a my size shift, which means I got home around nine o'clock. Um, 
I walk into my room and literally all of Lex's stuff is gone. It is all packed up in bags. And she comes out of the bathroom or something, wherever she was, and she was like, Liz, I'm leaving tonight. Um, because her mom's condition got progressively worse and she needed to leave immediately to be with her family, which of course 100% understandable. Um, so that day, um, Kat was off from work, um, and Sarah was supposed to be closing, um, so Kat went to go pick up Sarah, and Sarah left work early, um, and we all took Lex to the airport. Um, at that point though, um, part of it with Kat was because she was working those crazy ridiculous hours every single week, like a person's body physically cannot handle that workload every single week. I'm sure you see it on the Facebook groups, you're like, oh yeah, CPs can get like 60 hours a week, but like that's around Christmas, like that's around like peak times. She was getting that literally every single week. This this job was physically killing this girl. She was she was racking up so many points because she had to call out so often because she was sick all of the time because that's madness to work that amount. So um, between that week where we knew that Lex was going to leave the following week, um, Kat was trying to put in like medical requests to maybe get her role changed because she felt like she was being useless to Disney if she had to call out all the time because she was getting so sick from working so much. Um, so throughout that week, she um, realized that that was something that um, the company could not work with. They were like, we can't change you. We spent so much time and energy um, training you to be a barista, we can't change your role. She's like, well, can I at least get my location changed? Maybe to something more slower paced, like Creature Comforts and Animal Kingdom or something like that. Um, and it was a no-go because again, none of those other locations have ever had CPs. So they were still just trying to figure it out. Um, Kat's training was very extensive because not only did she have to have regular food and beverage training, like all these other people in operations and standard training. She also had to go and have specialized training um, in a lab to learn how to make all of these drinks and like work at a Starbucks besides just working at Disney. Um, so yeah, it, it did cost Disney a lot of extra training. And I mean, I get it. It makes sense at a business standpoint that, hey, you spent all this money training this girl how to make Starbucks drinks. But like, you gotta like be human. Like, you're literally killing this girl. Um, so when Kat found out uh, there was no way she can get a location changed, um, Kat was like, I have to leave because either she was just going to stay sick in bed until August or like die, you know, like, so she found that out, um, like, like a day or two like before Lex left um, so Kat decided she had to self term um, for her health like it was crazy like how often like Kat was sick so Kat wound up self terming um, let's see Lex left on Friday the 28th um, and Kat self-termed on Monday, May 1st, the day of the Starlet Splash. So she self-termed that morning um, because she wanted to go in, have one last shift, and like explain to her leaders, hey, I have to leave because this is really becoming a health issue for me. Um, so Kat left. Um, and then catch it all up with me, um, you know, Obviously, like, you know, I was really miserable at that point. Um, and I, um, as you all know, I also um, recently walked for my college graduation, though I graduated, you know, in the winter. 
Uh, my school only does commencement once a year, so my commencement was May 30th, um, which happens to be Memorial Day weekend. Um, and for a while, I was trying to get, you know, the days off so I can fly home and I would be able to go to my commencement. Um, so I was playing, like, back and forth with my leaders and scheduling. Um, you know, my leaders tried really hard for scheduling to try to get me those days off, but um, being that it was a popular weekend, like Memorial Day weekend, um, there was no way it was possible for them to get me those days off. Um, so that was like kind of like the final straw for me where I was like, I, you know, applied to like over 11 different PIs and was rejected from all of them. And um, all of the other like anxiety and like depression kind of issues that I felt like um, was developing and I didn't want for them to turn into a real full-fledged problem. Um, I was like, I, what's the point of staying? There's literally no point. Uh, my degree um, is in dramatic arts, um, so I do a lot of like uh, theatrical prop and scenic making. Um, and I live in New York City, which is the theater capital of the world. Um, it would be literally stupid for me to try to get jobs anywhere else besides home. Um, and most like apprenticeships and internships only really want you six months after graduation. Um, and by the time I finished my college program, I would be way past that six months of graduation. Uh, so it was just silly for me to try to stay in Disney if I wasn't going to go further with the company, um, which I knew at that point if I didn't get any of those PIs, um, I knew for a fact I was not going to go further with the Walt Disney Company. Um, well, in Orlando, anyway. There's still hope. If anyone <laughs> works at Disney Theatrical Group, I put in an application to be an usher like two months ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so uh, my mom is like, oh, you know, just like wait a week and maybe like see what happens and whatnot. Um, but the way my schedule dropped, I was about to be trained on um, Festival of Fantasy, um, which obviously is an incredible opportunity, um, but when my mom, would, I had three days off. I had that weekend off, so I had April 29th, 30th, and May 1st off, um, and Lex left that 28th, and Kat already decided that she was going to self-term on May 1st. I was like, it would not make any sense for me to show up on my next shift at work to be trained on something that I was not going to go further with. If I had three days off, I was going to use those three days to pack up all my stuff and pack up my car. Um, so um, I talked to my parents and... Um, they agreed that this was probably the best decision for me. They would have liked it maybe like for it to be a week later or whatnot, so um, it might have been easier for one of them like to you know fly down and help me move like drive back home because it's like over a 20 hour drive <laughs> back to New York from Orlando. Um, but it didn't make sense for me to stay because of all the training I had to go through to work on FOF. Um, so I packed up my things and I, uh, I dropped off my costumes and I went to Magic Kingdom to hand in my IDs back to my uh, leaders and I talked to housing the day after the Starlet Splash and I drove away from Orlando for a very long time. <laughs> There's like so many things where it's like, you know, it makes you second guess but I knew that with, you know, Kat and Lex gone, my program was not going to be the same. It is so, so important for you to be, like, best friends with your roommates. Um, because it's the easiest to hang out with. Like, especially when you have um, a role where you don't consistently work with the same people, it is so important for you to be very close with your roommates. Um, like, working in entertainment like I do, it, it was, it's very hard to work with the same people all the time. 
Um, sure, like, you get to know some of them. I definitely had some work friends. Shout out to all you guys, <laughs> if any of you guys watch these videos. Um, but, you know, you have built-in friends if you're friends with your roommates. Um, you know, that's why it was difficult a lot of times for me and Bianca to hang out. Um, because, you know, we wouldn't necessarily know, like, what everyone's schedule is. Obviously, if you live with the person, you know exactly, you know, when they're coming home and things like that, when they're off. Um, you know, just texting people sometimes isn't the most efficient way, um, to hang out with people. Um, so, and Lex, like, Lex, like, talked me down and, like, helped me through so many uh, you know, situations I got myself into, um, just in the few months that I was still on the program, uh, I really felt like, you know, with Lex gone, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to make it through. Um, so that's, that's how, uh, three out of the four people, um, who lived in our apartment <laughs> all self-termed within a week of each other. Um, if you have any more questions about, you know, self-terming, how exactly that works, or just any uh, questions about the college program in general, questions about costuming, um, working on parades or anything like that, um, you can leave them in the comments below, hit me up on social media. Um, I love to talk about the Disney college program. I mean, I still love Disney, like, I, I still make these videos, I still have a shop where I make Disney-related things, like, I'm still obsessed with Disney, you know, like, it's just the timing wasn't right for my life to work with the company for a little bit. Um, so yeah, I still love Disney, <laughs> basically. Um, so yeah, if you liked this video, um, make sure to subscribe. I make a whole bunch of other content um, related to the Disney College program, um, and I like to feel like a lot of my other content is like if lifestyle channels were all Disney you know um because I do like favorites videos and lookbooks and um of course vlogs <laughs> um so yeah please like and subscribe maybe even comment or something <laughs> um and I will see you guys all next time I have so many videos I need to post uh, my computer is brimming with all this footage I need to post on the internet. <laughs> so I will see you guys then. Uh, have a seamless day, everyone. Bye!